didn't have a title for it, but we will be teaching out of a book that was given to us by Pastor some years ago, and it's called A Heart to Serve. Serving the Gift and Ministry of God, and it's by Reginald Ezel. And it's, it's actually just been a real blessing just going back through a lot of material that Pastor has given us over the years. And this one kind of just coincides with a lot of what we've been talking about, our gift of ministries and ministering to the people. And it may be more than one session because um, I actually wasn't able to get through the book just going through and reading it through and just taking in the word that we was blessed by. And a, and a lot of it was, like Pastor was saying earlier, about um, knowing your calling when you're appointed a position in the church because the Lord has appointed him to be the overseer of his flock. And that flock is us out in the, you know, out in the audience, you know, Pastor, you know, has his pulpit and we are his sheep. So when he teach us, we goes out and we teach the word that the pastor had delivered to us. So, and today, you know, they say the purpose of the ministry of help. If you could turn to 1 Corinthians 12 and 28. So the first section of the books, like he was saying, the purpose of ministry of helps. So the first part, it tells you to, asks you is what part do you play everybody has a different gift everybody has a different ministry all of our ministries are not going to be the same so what part do you play in the ministry but all of our part is very vital inside the church as it is outside of the church if you have it by saying amen coming from 1 Corinthians 12 and 28. Readings. And God has set some in the church, first apostle, second prophet, third teachers. After that miracle, then the gift healing, help governing, and diverse, diverse side, diversity. diversity of tongues. So you see there, he's given some apostles, some prophets, teachers, and then after that, the miracles and gifts of healing. So your ministry may be within one of those. You just have to use it to what God has given you. And then it goes on to talk about, you know, that scripture, it identifies as a supernatural ministry. It's what holds the church together. So we know when we talk about holding something together, you have to lay a foundation. You need a foundation. When you have a church, you're going to have to use each and every member or person within that church to build on that foundation. Just like when you have a home, you have to have a, a firm foundation in that home in order for it to hold up and stand up. And it said, we can't just go to church to worship God, but also be trained and taught the way God in order to become an efficient witness inside and outside of the church. That being said is, um, the pastor, you know, teach, you know, whether it's the, the evening service, Bible study, <coughs> excuse me, or whether any service that the Lord had blessed him to deliver from us. Once we as taught as the student of the word, we goes out and, and we minister. And, and you know, and I remember a scripture a while back, the pastor said, when we go outside of the church, we have to, you know, have our armor on because we're going to have the non-believers that's going to attack us. But if you truly and firm believe in the Holy Word that was taught by your pastor, you're going to endure the hardship that comes with the non-believers and the naysayer of those that don't believe in the Lord. But you still have to stand strong and keep fighting for what you believe in because it ain't easy, but you still have to have your armor on and, and endure 
the heartache and the pain that's going to be delivered your way. And just keep pressing in because what you believe in, you have to stand for and keep fighting. Amen. Amen. So like he said, um, we can't just go to church just to worship. I know before when, you know, growing up and people ask you, well, why do you go to church? And most people would say, I'm going to worship. Is that all you're doing? We can't just go to worship. We have to go to learn and be taught so that we can go out and be effective witnesses to God's people and what he's called us to become. Because it's, we're going to be tested because they want to know what you're saying is true. And then, you know, and I'm like this. If, if I don't believe in what you're saying, I have to go and research. But the Bible tells you everything that you need to know if you just read and study it. And then if they don't believe what I'm delivering to them, the only thing I can tell them is pick up their Bible. And what I'm saying, I'm cold-hearted, truthful about what I'm saying. But to them non-believers, I just tell them to pick up their Bible. And the same thing I'm delivering and teaching them that was taught to me is in the Bible as well. So we have to know that we all have a purpose in the kingdom. We were all put here for a reason. Um, the next scripture is going to kind of coincide with the first scripture. It, it'll be coming from Ephesians 4 and 11. Ephesians 4 and 11. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. What part do you play in the ministry of helps? And it reads in Ephesians 4.11. And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and some teachers. So again, you know, he's, he's saying what he's given, uh, given some people. You know, you may have that title of a prophet, you may have that title of an evangelist, and you may have that title of a pastor, but what part are you playing? So we know that God has appointed one man to oversee the sheep or to teach and train his people. You know, say everyone else in the church has it been called to serve this man and to do the work of a ministry? And like you said, the God has appointed, you know, Pastor Marvin Reese to be the teacher, but at the same time, he is training us. And then as he's training us, like you said, we train the one that's up under us, the same thing that our pastor had delivered to us. He said, and if you have called to the ministry of help, then you should be given some type of assistance, directly and indirectly to the man that God has appointed and true overseer. If you are not helping in some way, not supporting your pastor totally in his work, then you are causing the problem within the church. And that being said is, by now, that everyone who's been a part of Grace and Truth Global Church, that we know, <coughs> excuse me, we know that we have a strong man of God in Pastor Marvin Reese. And, and he deliver us totally. And so he's not telling us to do nothing that he's not going to do within the church because Amen. we are a team. And we cannot win, you know, with some of us playing a part. All of us have to play a, 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 va a major and a vital part to keep this structure going on. And like the pastor said, it's not all about the title, this and my bishop and, and everybody else. You know, it's... It's understanding this rules and regulation to all that, but do you know the word for yourself, the true word? And him delivering the word that he delivered for the longest I know him to be Marvin Reese, but as my pastor Marvin Reese, the word is truthful. And, and, and I can honestly say that he's a man of God and he had delivered strongly into me and everybody who's been around him, they know that he's a true man of God. Amen. So again, we have to be willing and able to assist the man of God that God has put to oversee us. Because um, like it says, I mean, you can come time and time to church and just sit and be idle, as we've always learned. You have to get up 
and be about God's business. Be able to assist, whether it's being an usher, you know, whether it's greeting someone or maybe cleaning up around the church. We have to be willing to assist to take some of the burden off of the pastor. Because he is a human, he get tired just like the rest of us get tired. So, you know, he's, like I said, he's not going to ask you to do nothing that he's going to do. This is our church. Amen. And all of us have to play the part in our church if you want this ministry to continue going strongly as it is. So the next section of this chapter, it talks about born again to serve. So we have to be born again to serve. So if you are born again, you have been called to be a servant of God. So when you, you, you know, take that oath, you have to get up and start working, start learning, start being taught the word of God. And it says, you have to understand that if you are born again, you have been called to be the servant of God. This is your whole purpose of existence. This is the whole reason for living, to serve him and his purpose. You are not your own anymore. Furthermore, you need to get a clear understanding of why you are living in this day of time. After all, you have been born again. You have born another generation, but because of God's reason, you are living in this day and time. You need to find out what the purpose is so that you can fulfill it. This is important because your purpose is your calling. It is a very, it is a very reason you are living and breathing today. So we're, you know, we're here to be a blessing um, to others. You know, you use our gifts to help others. You know, and with this being Youth Sunday, we have to look at our generation that we're living in now. The youth needs God in their life. They need it now more than ever. You know, and we have to instill it. And now you're having babies having babies, so they're not teaching their children the word of God and who God is and what God stands for. So we, as believers and God's children, we have to go out there and do our part and still in our youth today. Um, our next scripture is actually going to be coming from Romans 6 and 22. By having this saying, amen. Hallelujah. What part do you play? We're at the section now, born again to serve. As it reads in Romans 6 and 22, by now being made free from sin and becoming servant of God, you have your fruit unto holiness and holiness and the end of everlasting life. being made free from sin, I thank God that he died on the cross for me to make my, me free from my sins. And, and um, that scripture reveals that when you accept Jesus Christ, you are made free from sin. Once you become free of sin, you automatically become a servant of God. This comes together as a package deal. You cannot have one without the other. Amen. And we're going to jump right back over to 1 Corinthians chapter 7, and we'll read verses 20 through 22. Hallelujah. Born again to serve. First Corinthians chapter seven verses twenty through twenty two. 
1 Corinthians chapter 7 and verse 20 reads, Let every man abide in the same calling wherein he was called. Art thy call begin of servant, care for it. But if thou mayest be made for, I'm excuse me, by if thou may, by thy mayest be made free, use it rather. For he that calleth in the Lord, being a servant, is the Lord freeman. freeman. Likewise also that he hath called being free his Christ, his Christ servants. Christ servants. Amen. So we are not born again just to continue in life the way we used to live or the way we desire, but now what God has desired for our life. So we got to continue contributing to the kingdom, giving into the kingdom. And it, talk, it goes on to talk about how he gave up his life so that we could be made free from sin and live eternity with him. And one of the things we always talk about is people always say, do as I say, but not do as I do. But we should be doing what we're saying we're doing. Which is God's way. And his way is the right way. There's no other way. And we're just going to go ahead and read verse 23 of 1 Corinthians and 7. Ye are bought with the price, but not with thy servant of man. So Jesus paid a price for us. He died for our sins. We are not, you are not your own. You are God's. You are God's child. So you can't do what you want to do. You have to, I'll, a lot of times when things come to me, I may not like a situation, but one of the things I find myself asking me is, what would God do in this situation? And in, in, in the book it reads, Jesus, pray, Jesus paid a price for you. You are not your own. If you buy something, it belongs to you, right? If you buy a car, for an example, would you want to get the full use out of the car seven days a week, not just on Sundays? So it is within God. He bought you, and when you accepted Jesus, you accepted his price. This especially applies to everyone who claims to be born again, but also say that they are, they are fire baptized and filled with the Holy Spirit. If you have said that God paid the price for you, then you must let him have, have your life. Let him run your life. Let him do with your life whatever he wants to do with it. Allow him to use you for his glory. If you ever want to fulfill your calling, you must be willing to become his technician. Amen. So like it says, you know, if you go out and buy a car or whatever you buy, you want the full use out of it. You don't want to get it one day and the next day it's broken. So we got to look at that as being born again Christians. We need to use every day as God is working in our lives. We can't just say, oh, I'm going to get up and I'm only going to read the Bible on Sunday. I'm only going to go to church on Sunday. I'm only going to look at or whether you watch it on, you know, live stream or however on Sundays. You have got to keep God in your life seven days a week, every day, all day. Because one thing about life, and especially the Lord, he's never run out of gas. Your Amen. car run out of gas. But what you do when your car runs out of gas, you got to put gas in it. With the Lord, he stays full. Amen. And then do you want to be full with the Lord? But the Bible tells you, and not only the Bible, your pastor as well, because he delivered that fullness of the Lord to you. And if you want to stay full, you're continuously following his word and following his footstep because the word is so full and graceful of joy. And if you want joy in your life, you have to continue to, to follow the step that the Lord had led for you and I. Amen. 
So the next section in the book is called, Call to a Specific Work. And it just continues in 1 Corinthians verse 24. Brethren, let every man wherein he is called, therein abide with God. So whatever you're called to do, make sure it was called or appointed by God. It's not something you just came up with yourself, but you are appointed by God. And it said, um, in this book it said, God has called you to do something no matter who you are and even if you do not think you have any talent. So we all have talents. Your talent may, is going to totally be something different from me. M one of my talents, I'm just going to use it, is praise and worship. I may not be the best singer, but I'm not worried about who I'm singing to for us here. I'm worried about whether I'm pleasing God in my worshiping, in my praising. It don't matter what my voice, I may be the worst singer it is, but as long as I'm pleasing God and I'm able to use my voice and the words that I am saying in those songs, that I'm being a blessing to God. And, um, you know, that, that being said, when somebody asks you um, what's your talent, what's your gift, God gave you a purpose to be on this earth, and everybody's talent is totally different. That being said, my wife said that she's not the best singer, but guess what? She doesn't sing to please man or woman. She sings to please the Lord. And then through the Lord, he delivered through her to sing the this, this, this songs of joy so that everybody can understand and withstand the word that came in her mouth that he delivered her to sing. That being said, you know, my gift, and you know, like I said, I, I, I love mechanic, but I love barbecue. I think I'm pretty good at both of them, uh, but, but my thing about it is I do my best. And, and, and if it weren't for the Lord, I wouldn't be good at what I do. So if somebody say, what's your calling or what's your purpose? I'm going to say, well, the Lord put it into me to do mechanic work or barbecue. I might not be the best, but, you know, I'm not cooking to please, you know, man or woman. I know what the Lord put in me to deliver what I am. So, you know, you're going to have your, your, your naysayers and you're going to have your, your ones that thinks about you and please you and praise you for the good works that you do. And at the end of the day, I know I please him, not please a man. So everybody has a calling and a purpose and you have a gift. Don't let your gift hold you back. Don't let, definitely let man or woman hold you back for using your gift. Bless somebody else and then continue to bless somebody else. Amen. So it talks about some of the reasons people may be having a hard time understanding what they're calling or what their beliefs are or what they're hearing from God. You have to get yourself in a place to make sure it is God telling you what to do. Because sometimes you can say, oh, I heard this, but then something didn't work out from you, for you. So you got to step back and say, was that really God telling me to do that? You know, so get yourself in in the perfect place. It tells you that maybe you're in the wrong place. Maybe if you're not hearing what you need to hear, you're not where God intends for you to be. We always hear, your place may not be here at Grace and True Global Church, but while you're here, we're going to teach and train you where God needs to send you. Because sometimes we may have to go, but we got to be ready when God says it's time for us to go. So we know that everybody's not going to stay in that particular place at that time. So just be ready and prepared. And that's like, you know, Pastor Marvin said, he teach, you know, daily. And as far as I know of, he has trained and prepared and teach us from his heart. And me knowing him for the long that I know, he is an honest, true man of God. So you can't leave him and say you was taught wrong. And what y'all know, that's, excuse me, that is a lie. But me knowing Pastor Marvin Reese, he has delivered nothing but the truth. And, and he and, always tells us to go back and read the word for yourself. And one thing I noticed about some of the scriptures, and, and, and I meant to mention to my wife about it, when, you know, the church is grace and truth, glow with church. Then it read, and I forgot what, what part of the Bible was, but they, and it said, in grace and truth. And the pastor delivered nothing but the truth. 
so then it, it also talks about maybe you're seeking the wrong signs because sometimes we see signs that may not be of God. So we have to be mindful of what signs we are seeking. Um, so we as God's people, we must get into a position so that we can receive his instructions, God's instructions over our life. And of course, by doing that, you have to read his word because he's waiting and ready to give you precise information. He's ready to give that for you. He's waiting for you to come to him, accept him in your life. And it goes on to talk about, you know, we have a problem of fulfilling our callings and talents because we don't know how to make it happen. Because sometimes, you know, and it goes back to talking about starting your business. Sometimes people are like, well, I can't start it if I don't have the money to start it. But we got to have faith in God and know that he will direct us to where we need to be to get to that position. Hallelujah. So we know that he's already, he has already given you a printed road map all we, and all your landmarks. So your life is already mapped out for you. God has already mapped it out for you. That's your road map, road map. And it has your key landmarks on it, on where you're supposed to be destined to go. And like my wife said, the Lord has a road map for you, but you definitely have to stay a course on that road map. But he didn't say it was going to be tough. He didn't say it was going to be rough. He said it wasn't going to be hell. He didn't say it was going to be headache. He didn't say it was going to be crisis on that road path. But you definitely have to stay according to that path that the Lord has laid out for you. Because if you are looking for the promise and the goodness that the Lord has set out for you, you have to stay a course. So we got to be ready and prepared at all times. Um, so it goes in to say that he'll meet us at every one of our intersections. Because throughout that road mark, road map, we're going to have intersections we're going to have to cross. Whether it's, you know, you're losing faith, he's going to be there to show you the faith is still there. Whether you've lost a job, he's going to be at that intersection to tell you there's better coming for you. Whatever the situation is, he's going to be at every intersection directing you on your calling and on your life. So we have to realize that we're not waiting on him to call us. He's already done that. He's already put that calling on your life. And I thank him for that. Hallelujah. So, and also in the books it talks about, if the body of Christ doesn't fulfill their calling or the scriptures, it's going to go unfulfilled. So we want to make sure we're fulfilling our callings. We're reading our scriptures so that the kingdom can continue to be filled. And then sometimes we're going to get in positions to where we are going to feel like we're struggling to do what we're called to do. But again, we got to dig deeper into God's word. Dig deeper. And we got to find out what's, what's wrong. Why are we not getting where we need to be. And a lot of times, you know, we hear it all the time in here. We got to start examining from ourselves. If we feel like we're not getting where we need to be, it's not nobody else's problem. It's our problem. We have to examine ourselves. And like Pastor always tells us, look in your mirror. You are probably the, you may be the problem. But you got to own up to that and realize that you are the problem. And make, make, the, make the necessary adjustments you need to make. We can't blame everybody else for our problems. You know, you have people where they're always, this is the reason why I did that, or that's the reason I did it. What part did you play in it? So examine yourselves. The next section in the book talks about God's work is not about you. And we're going to um, read scripture 1 Thessalonians 5 and 24.
1 Thessalonians 5 and 24, and the section in the book is titled, God's Work is Not About You. And it read, and it reads, faithfulness is that his calling you, who also will do you. Will do it. I'm sorry, and will do you. And then it goes on to talk about God's work is God's work. It's not about you. It never has been, and it never will be. So we have to realize we're doing God's work, not our work. So if he called you to do it, then he's going to do it through you because it's about him. And again, the purpose he has for you in your life while you're here on earth. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. And then it says, you should already know that you can't be effect- an effective service without having and Holy Spirit helping you to do the work. So we know that we do need the Holy Spirit to help us along to do God's work. I just want to read a little something in the book. It said, um, God's work is God's work. It is not about you. It has never been and it will never be. If he call you to do it, then he is going to do it through you because it is all about him. When I pray, I confess that. These is no lack in me because I abide by him. I stand on the word that promise. I can do all things to Christ that anointed one. You should already know that you cannot be an efficient servant without having the power of the Holy Spirit helping you to do the work. So know that everything that it takes to accomplish and to fulfill the calling upon your life when you're filled with the Holy Spirit. So then we'll actually go into the next chapter. And the title of this chapter is called Doing the Work Right. So we know a lot of times, and you can just take this like when you're at work, if you're trained to do something do work, you want to do it right the first time so you don't have to backtrack and do it again. So the first subtopic of under doing the right work right in the book is titled Understanding Authority. So Understanding Authorities and the chapter it talks about in here is Romans 13. Romans 13 verses 1 and 2. Um, so just why my husband's getting ready to read that. Um, so understanding authority. A lot of people don't like authority. They don't like people telling them what to do, when to do it, how to do it. But we have to realize when you're in the kingdom of God, sometimes you're going to have to listen to authority. God has called them. And you have authority. So Romans 13 verses 1 and 2. And Romans 13, 1 and 2 reads, Let every soul be subject unto the higher power, for there is no power but of God. The power that be of order, uh, ordained of God, whosoever dare so, therefore resist the power, resist the ordinance of God, and they that resist shall receive to themselves damnation. Hallelujah. So a servant, one who is under another's authority. So us being servants, we're under an authority, God's authority. And he's given that man or woman of God to teach and train us. So now we're under their authority. So we have to be willing and acceptable to listen to authority. And it goes on to say, if you are called to be a servant, then you are called to One, serve God by serving man. Two, obey and minister to others' needs. So so, like we said, it's not going to always be about us. We may have to serve for someone else. 
doing God's work. And the third one it talks about um, is confirm the needs to the ministry you have been called to serve. So again, whatever ministry God has called you to be a part at this present time, help, be a need, be a necessity, be an asset, don't be a liability. And then if, if you're not sure about the work, talk to somebody who's either in church or outside of church that does the work right. And you don't want to continually doing the work wrong and you think it's right because somebody is following your path. You know, like we said earlier, you know, the Lord has laid the path down for us. So we know that the path that the Lord has laid been right. But some, pe- some, some, some pe- people, whether it's in the church or outside the church, they've been, te- you know, prof- false prophets. And you don't want to go down that road because when you're standing next to somebody who knows the word, you, you're trying to challenge them, and here it is. You've been taught the wrong word, and they're delivering it right. So you're going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And you don't want to go back and forth, and that's where the Bible comes in at. You read and study your Bible, and if you don't know, you ask somebody who does know the word that's a little more powerful than you, that you can have the true understanding, knowing that the man of the, uh, the, man of the God or the woman of God, honestly, from their heart to you, that you can accept the word that they're delivering is truthful. Amen. And like for me, one of the things for me, I've never been a person who likes to get up in front of a lot of people, but I've prayed to God, and the more I do it, the more comfortable I get doing it. Um, so and I'm, I'm thankful for God because, like I said, he's always working. He's always doing a work in our lives. So we just have to let him guide our lives, and he's going to get us through whatever we need to get through at that particular time. So next, we're going to go to Ephesians 4, and we're going to read verses 11 through 13. Thank you, Lord. By having it said, amen. Ephesians 4, verses 11 through 13. And it reads, and he gave some apostle and some prophet and some evangelist and some pastor and teacher for the perfection of the saints. Perfecting? The perf- excuse me. For the for perfecting the- of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of fullness of Christ. So again, it talks about, you know, he's given some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers. So again, you just got to find your calling or what God has put into your life. And one, it was one word within the verse 13, unity. Right now, again, with this being Youth Sunday, we need unity. And specifically here in Jacksonville, but we need it all over, all over the United States right now. It's just so much happening. And we've all, especially being the body of Christ, we have got to come together and be unified. And the next section, you know, it talks about, and, and then again, a little bit more about on unity. Till we all come into unity of faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God until a perfect man into the measure and stature of the fullness of Christ, as it talks about again in 13. So we have to look at a goat as a servant, a member of the church. You got to get in the right place. Again, get in the right place. The pastor's job is to perfect the saints by teaching us the word so we can do the work of the ministry. So that that calls for the entire body of Christ to be edified. Not just one or two, but we have to call the entire body of Christ to do his work. And that's go for all of us. We are the entire body. So we all have a job and a purpose to do. 
we all got to deliver the word that was delivered to us. But at the same time of doing, delivering the word, we want to make sure we're doing it right. Amen. Even though we're going to have challenges, but through them challenges, you know, step back, you know, have somebody to guide you. And within that guidance, make sure that they are guiding you right. Because at the end of the day, you want to know that you've done a job well done. So it goes on and talks about, so this is God's divine order. All authority is ordained by God, and we know his word reveals this to us. And then it goes on to say, so, so far in the book, what we've learned is you have been called to serve. We are his servants. Get in a position to hear from God on your calling by reading his word. And third, you have been made free from sin, so fulfilling your calling is your reasonable service. So we have to remember, being a servant, you must be willing to submit to somebody. Submit, because we don't know what type of service we may have to give to that person. But of course, you want it to be God, godly, God willing. So it goes on to say, recognize authority and submit. Becoming submissive according to God's word has to be your own decision, not your pastors or not anyone else. You have to be willing to submit to what God has called you to do. They're just here. Our pastors are just here to teach us along the way, guide us. Next scripture is going to come from Second Timothy verses one and nine. I'm sorry, chapter one, verse nine. Second Timothy one and nine reads Who have served us, who has who have who have saved us and called us with the holy calling, not according to our work, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given us in Christ Jesus before the, whole, before the world began. Amen. And the next section goes on to talk about the holy calling. So he has saved you and called you. He expects a work out of you. Holy calling means you belong to God. The holy calling belongs to God. He also expects you to do with it what he wants you to do with it. A holy calling is not reflected by your works. Again, it's by God's work. And you can be busy working and not, so it also, and it talks about in the book how you can be busy working and not fulfilling your calling. So, we want to make sure that when we're doing our work, we're fulfilling our calling. How, thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. So he expects you to work his, you know, work with his purpose. Hallelujah. And in the book it says, his holy calling means you belong to God. Mm -hmm such as the holy type and the holy temple. The holy calling belongs to God. He called you, but you belong to him. He is expecting you to do with it what he wants you to do with it. So not what you want to do with it, what the Lord wants you to do with it. Amen. So remember when you're doing it, it's for because the Lord wants you to do it. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. And we'll go through just a few more of these because I do know we want to leave Pastor a few minutes at the end. Um, so we're going to go into Galatians 6, verses 4 and 5. But let every man prove his own work, and then shall he have rejoiced in himself alone and not in another. 
And then verse 5 says, for every man should bear his own burden. So then it goes on to say, if you are doing the right work, then it will be done under the anointing of God. So you'll know if the work is right, because again, it'll be under the anointing of God. If you are working and no one is being effective or no evidence of righteous fruit, then you are not proving the word. So I'm just going to repeat that again. If you are not working and no one is being effective, no evidence of righteous fruit, then you are not proving the word. So we want to make sure that when we are doing God's work, that we are affecting others. We are showing evidence, and our fruit is growing. And then it goes on to talk about when it's God's work, expect lives to change. If you are in the right positioning, the anointing will speak for itself. So we have to know when things are going right, and it is, and it is right, people are going to be effective, and you're going to see it. And then it goes on to say, you rejoice in yourself, not because of who you are, but whose you are. So, again, when we do these things and good things come, we can't just get, we can't give ourselves the credit. We have to give God the credit because he's the one that has worked on the inside of us for us to be able to be effective in people's lives. So be, be accountable of your work because you will have to stand before God on judgment day. Hallelujah. Um, if we can go ahead and turn to Ecclesiastics 9 and 10. And then, like I said, we'll probably have to have a part two, maybe three of this, because that's just how good the book was, going back and reviewing it. And before he reads Ecclesiastes 9 and 10, the subtopic of this one is get up and get moving. Whatsoever thy hand findest to do, do it with thy might. For there is no work, nor device, nor knowledge, nor knowledge nor wisdom in thy grave wherein thou goeth. So it goes on in the book to talk about some people justify not now what their calling is by doing nothing. This should be the time to start doing something. Whatever your hands find to do, God will begin to order your steps. Once you start moving and doing things, he will start leading. So again, we have to have faith and know that whatever our desire is, again, going back to the businesses or people saying they don't have the money, have faith and know that God will order our steps to get where we need to be. In the book it said, perhaps you know what God has called you to do, so you justify this as the reason for doing nothing. However, this is the point which you need to start doing something. Whatever your hands find to do, so God can be so God can begin to direct your step. Once you start moving and doing something, He will start leading you. As you continue to seek His calling upon your life, He will begin to minister to your heart. When you start asking, seeking, and knocking, He will reveal the divine plan, the divine plan for your life. You know that God is watching you. He knows that you will give your answer and everything you do. You know that you are going to give an account of how well you perform what he has called you to do. So why not wait? Get busy moving towards your calling. Hallelujah. And we'll actually just, because that gives us a stopping point so that pastor can come up and share the last few minutes of service. We hope you have enjoyed this. It has definitely, like I said, been a blessing to us. The title of the book is A Heart to Serve. 
serving the gift and ministry of God by Reginald Ezell. Amen. Hallelujah. Can you put your hands together? Because that word was a blessing to me. I don't know about nobody else. Just a word of encouragement. Hallelujah. A word of encouragement. Doing, get about doing our Father's business. We all, God have called all of us to do something. Amen. Hallelujah. And we all play a very important part in the body of Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. I thank God for that word today because truly it encouraged my heart. You know, uh, it just it just set a fire down on the inside of you to think, okay, what am I doing? What am I doing? If I'm doing what God actually called me to do. And one thing they was uh, when um, Tundra and Greg was talking, you got to start doing something. A lot of people, I don't know what God has called me to do. I don't know his plan and his purpose for my life. You don't find out until you start doing something. You got to get up and start doing something. It's something that you're passionate about. And, you know, Greg was talking about what he's passionate about the, uh, uh, with, with the cars and, and, and the barbecue. But, you know, even within that, it's ministry in that because what? You're going to see people doing that type of work. You're going to see people, and that's the opportunity for you to be able to share the word of God with somebody wherever you go. Amen. We have one sister here. Wherever she goes, she's going to share God. She's going to mess with people regardless of wherever she is. She's going to give them a track. I mean, she's going to just be a blessing. It's just how she go about just to be a blessing to somebody to start talking about Christ. And it's just a simple thing. It's just a simple thing. And sometimes it's just a hug. You know, it's just uh, 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 giving somebody a coupon here to help you out. God bless you. And just people hearing that word, God bless you. You know, that's ministry in itself. People think that just that might be something simple, but that's ministry within itself. Because why? You loving on people. You showing people the love of God because of the love of God that's down on the inside of you. Amen. Hallelujah. We just thank God as Pastor uh, makes his way up here um, to the pulpit. But we just thank God today for that word. Thank you, uh, Greg and Tondrell. Thank you for your ministry gift. Amen. This morning, we thank you for yielding to the spirit of God, letting the Lord use you to encourage us here at Grace and Truth. That remind us that we all have a part that we have to play. We all have a part that we have to do in building this foundation that God have called for this ministry here at Grace and Truth Global Ministry. Amen. Hallelujah. It's not you. My battery's gone down. Uh, son, what a blessing. <laughs> what a blessing of God. Amen. That was good teaching. Amen. That was good word. Amen. From the Lord. Amen. And uh, I am thankful to God. Amen. Pastors eating and feeding good and blessed. Amen. And you can have as many sessions as you want to have. Amen. You can have Sunday coming or Sunday after that. Amen. Amen. Get it all out. Amen. I'm serious. I ain't playing right now. <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. Uh, so if you want them, you, they're all yours. Amen. Back to back. You can have them. Amen. It's fresh in you. It's fresh on you. And uh, that's what God does. Amen. So uh, fifth Sunday is our mission Sunday next Sunday. Amen. But what uh, what a great way, amen, to um, make sure that that service is carried out because it's about the Great Commission. Amen. Really the only mission. Amen. That we go in all the world, preach the gospel to every creature. Amen. He that believes is baptized shall be saved. Amen. And so we thank God for those of you that have been watching with us by way of Facebook Live. 
Um, amen. Connect with us. Amen. We thank God for you. We are here for your profit to be a blessing. Amen. In your life and to see your life grow and mature and move forward. Amen. To those lives that we have. Amen. Touch. We have been a blessing to. Amen. We so value. Amen. You. Amen. And we thank God for you. Amen. Being a part. Amen. Of this ministry, of this vision. Amen. Believing in us. Amen. Allowing us to teach you. Amen. To feed us. Amen. As the Holy Spirit gives it to us. Amen. And for the body of Christ as a whole. Amen. All the leaders. Amen. Apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. Amen. Fellow laborers. Amen. In the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. In this city, this state. Amen. Around the nation. Amen. We ought to be thanking God. Amen. For good, good, good spiritual leadership. Amen. And every sheep. Amen. Need a good shepherd. Amen. That's after God's own heart. Amen. And you see how people, amen, connect with the church of your choice. Amen. But you need to connect with the church that the Holy Spirit is directing you. Amen. And connect with the leadership. Amen. That God is directing you. Amen. And I believe your life will be blessed. Amen. Like never before. And uh, so they reminded me, amen, of John 1 17. Amen. For the law was given by Moses. <laughs> amen. We used to end a lot, most of all our service like, but grace and truth came by. Amen, Jesus Christ. Amen. And so that's what we want to give people, the truth of God's word. Amen. We love you to life. Amen. Be blessed. All right. Remember, amen, we'll uh, uh, be back here, uh, Bible study, uh, Wednesday at 7. Um, in a sense of prayer, I'm sorry.